Okay, here is the third video on graphing trig functions. And then we're gonna do some, a couple of examples from 6.6 .6 together. Um, so let's go back to um, the sine graph. And you can apply the same with cosine as well, but here's the general shape of the sine graph. <laughs> Very rough shape, I should say. Well, um, there's something that you maybe have heard in physics called amplitude. And the amplitude is thought of as the distance from the center line, kind of the still position, um, to the top of the crest or the bottom of the trough, a uh, crest or peak. Um, so in the case of sine, this is just y equals sine x graph, we think of when there hasn't been any transformation of sine, so literally just dealing with y equals sine of x, the amplitude is one, because the midline here is the x-axis, and now how high and below this resting position does the graph go? Well, it goes absolute value of one away. So it goes one away or the absolute value. So the amplitude is always thought about as um, the symbol we use is little a, and you always report it as a positive number. So if I were graphing something like y equals two sine x, well, what does that mean? That means multiply all the y values by two. So of course, any y value that's zero stays the same, but, um, one, which occurs at pi over two, would be up at two instead of one. And so one gets multiplied by two rather. And at pi, I'm still at zero. And at three pi over two, instead of being at negative one, I'd be at negative two and so on. So this graph would be stretched vertically. Um, with an amplitude, and it keeps going in the negative direction too. So the amplitude in this case would be two. Um, so that's something worth noting. Another thing is, well, what about, um, when does the period of a function change? Well, let me move this here. What about if we were graphing something like y equals sine of not x, but instead 2x. Well, remember that the crucial points we plotted before when we graphed just standard sine were 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. If we wanted to just graph one period, and then we could extend that one period. Well, we're gonna think about what do I have to put in for x so that I'm actually taking the sine of zero? Well, in this case, you'd still put in zero, but what about for pi over two? Well, instead of putting in pi over two, in order to take the sine of pi over two, I'd actually be putting in pi over four. So if we remember back to our transformations of the past, whenever there was a transformation that occurred within the domain, then you are actually doing the opposite here. So this means in this case, I'm doing a horizontal shrink by a factor of two. So instead of plotting the um, zero pi over two pi, three pi over two pi, I'm actually every point there, every x point that I used to plot is now being divided by two. So I'm gonna plot zero, then I'm gonna plot pi over four, half of pi is pi over two, half of three pi over two is three pi over four, and half of two pi is pi. So notice when I'm plugging in zero, I'm still doing sine of zero, so that would be zero. But when I plug in pi over four, I'm doing sine of pi over two which I'm up at one. When I plug in pi over two, I'm doing sine of pi, which is zero. When I plug in three pi over four, I'm doing sine of three pi over two, which is negative one. When I plug in pi, I'm doing sine of two pi, which is up at zero. And once you do one period, the idea is then you can extend it, keep on extending it in both directions. Like you'd have negative pi over four, which are negative one and so on. Um, an easy way to think about then how, um, how I could find a period of a trig function 
Well, this value in front of x, we label as b. So remember before, just a little bit ago in this video, I said a stands for amplitude, the absolute value of a, in other words. Well, this b value tells me what the period is gonna be. So in order to find the period of sine, and the same is actually gonna be true for cosine as well, it's going to be, the period is gonna be equal to two pi over b, which makes sense because it's, if the, if the original period is two pi, and if b is a value greater than one, then we're gonna be horizontally shrinking it. If b is a value less than one, we're gonna be stretching it. So multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction b. Um, so for example, if I had y equals cosine of 1 half x, the period is gonna be two pi over 1 half x, uh, over 1 half, don't need the x, sorry, just the coefficient. Um, so it'd be two pi over one half or two pi times two or four pi. So it's gonna be stretched horizontally. So this is really no different than when we did transformations in the first, um, in the first um, uh, semester. And then when I think about, okay, based on that new period, how am, what points am I plotting? Well, you always divide the period by four to get your first bit of crucial points. Um, if, again, this is as long as there hasn't been a horizontal shift. So if I'm plotting um, cosine of 1 half x and the period's 4 pi, well, the interval width between my points is going to be 4 pi over 4, or pi. And in fact, that interval width wouldn't, even, wouldn't change if we did a horizontal shift too. Um, okay, um, let's pause and let's, so we just talked about amplitude and period changes. Let's do an example in 6.6 six to kind of get a feel of what's going on. Let's do um, number 1A in worksheet 6.6. Six. And I'm asking you to do a lot here, so um, let's go through doing all this pieces. I'm actually not asking you to graph though in number one, um, that comes later. But if I, but I'm asking you for a lot of information which would be helpful if you go to do a graph. All right, start off easy here. The first thing I'm asking for is amplitude. Well, the amplitude as I can see is just two, what's in front of that trig function. Um, and that means it'll be, when I take my, um, my equilibrium or my resting, um, my resting line, that's how high above and below that line this graph will go. The period in this case is equal to two pi divided by, well, what's in front of that X or that angle? Three, so the period's gonna be two pi over three. Um, how do I find a y-intercept? We'll plug in zero for x. So my y-intercept, the x value is zero. The y value, if I plug in zero for x, is two sine negative pi over eight plus one. And just leave it like that because we do not know what sine of negative pi over eight is. The fourth bit of information, the general form for the x-coordinate of each peak. So remember, originally the peaks occurred, for y equals sine x, the peaks occurred every pi over two plus two k pi. So let's set the inside, because there has been a horizontal transformation, we're going to, because there's been a period change and a horizontal shift here, um, can tell that by looking at this here. Let's see how where those peaks are changed. So to do that, and this is again the peaks part, I'm gonna set what's inside my trig function equal to pi over two plus two k pi. And we're gonna solve for x because this will be the new places, new representation of where the peaks occur. So to do that, I'm gonna add pi over eight to both sides. So I've got three X equals 
Adding um, pi over eight, I get, let's see, five pi over eight plus two k pi, and then divide both sides by three. So my peaks occur every five pi over 24 plus two k pi over three. And just to check here, since originally the um, peaks, if we were just graphing sine x, the peaks would occur every multiple, every integer multiple of the period, which then was two pi. It makes sense that now they're occurring every multiple of the new period, which is two pi over three. Okay, and let's then do our troughs or our low point. So originally the troughs were every three pi over two plus two k pi. So let's see where they are now. Three pi over two plus two k pi. All right, adding pi over eight and dividing by three, let's just do this in one step here. We're going to get 13 pi over 24 plus two k pi over three. Um, finally, let's figure out our range. So our range, remember normally our range is negative one to one. So that would be what is coming out of the sine function. So you've got two times the range, what's coming out of the sine function plus one. And doing our range analysis like we would do before, we will get negative one to three. So our range, that would be our range.